And this week, a man who knows exactly what it's like to represent his country at the highest level of international sport, Monty Panesar. He played cricket for England from 2006 to 2013 and experienced everything from a 5-0 Ashes thrashing to winning the tournament for the first time since 1987. He went on to mentor the Australian team on spin bowling and he's been heavily involved in teaching the next generation of cricketers. And I'm very pleased to say that Monty joins me in the studio this afternoon. So, Monty, thank you so much for joining me. Really, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank really you for having me on the show. Nice to have a chat with you. So uh, let's talk about the fact that you love cricket so much. Where did you, where did that come from? Yeah, it came from, actually, um, my, my father. Uh, he used to play for, uh, actually, Luton Tack College. And then my dad's sort of best friend uh, used to have a, a Sunday morning you know, uh, cricket uh, um, youth uh, training um, at Luton Town and Indians, mm. um, which actually amalgamated. Um, it was Luton Town originally, and we were called Luton Indians. And then they needed the members, we needed the great facilities, and, and that's how the club was called Luton Town and Indians. And, and that's where you know my love for the game and, and that passion you know mm. to play for England came from. We used to love cricket. Cricket was a great game. We used to play that for fun. That was good stuff. I mean, I was never any good at it, but <laughs> you you were pretty good at it, and you made a debut in two thousand and six for England. I mean, what, what was that like actually playing for the national side? Yeah, that was amazing. That's something that I, I didn't ever think I would, you know, play for my country. And uh, things changed for me at the age of 15 when I was at uh, Bedfordshire at Nor uh, Upper Sunday College, where Paul Taylor, who used to play for North Ass and Tony Pemberthy were there. And uh, I wanted always to be like Wazi Makram when I watched the 92 World Cup. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to bowl fast like him, but I just I couldn't, you know, bowl quick. And he said to me, why don't you try spin, you know, with my long fingers and, you know, broad shoulders well, that I had. you've got unusually large hands. Yes. So and, have I. <laughs> yeah, and, and with the long fingers, that allows me to get generate the pace. Let's uh, see whose hands are bigger. Spin. Let's see them. I think my hands are probably bigger than yours. Well, uh, not, not bad at yeah, all. Must, must be good. <laughs> good, good. No, I'm no good at it. So yeah, yeah so go on. So yeah. so yeah, so he said to me, you should you know change to spin bowling. And mm. and the next game I played um, for Bedfordshire under 15s against Worcester, Worcester, Worcester under 15s at the Royal Grammar School. Mm. And my parents took me there, and and I took seven for 35. And is, and, is that good? Because I'm not great with the scoring. Seven for 35. So that means. Is that seven people out for 35 runs? Runs. Oh, that is very good. So yeah. no, so they didn't get more than five each. Well, um, well, let's let's, let's just say seven for thirty-five. Is, right. is, it's a good, it's a good sort of Very starting good. point for Very me. Good. And and I went back to Paul Taylor, and he said you should stick to bowling spin. So that was that piece of information that kind of like if you never told me, mm. I don't think I would have been, you know, playing for England. So um, it was brilliant. You know, North fans were absolutely brilliant, supporting my career and, mm. and, and taking me, and, and and so the other counties as well. And 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 two thousand and six, you know, I, I thought to myself. I don't think I'll be playing against India in India. And obviously, they wanted an attacking spinner, uh, England at the time. And Andrew Flintoff backed me and, and he said, you know, I, I, you know, I want you to play in that first test match. And then took Sachin Tendulkar, which uh, I think is one of the greatest sportsmen ever, as my first test wicket. And then mm. that was it. I was sprung into you know, limelight wow, straight away. Wow, that must away. have been great. And also, I, I read that you're left-handed. So you're a left-handed spinner. Does, does that throw people, pardon the pun? <laughs> well, I, they always say that left-hand spinner, Sportsmen have, uh, you know, sports people have a, they just make the game look a lot more easier. You look at the likes of Brian Lara, David Gower, we had Bishan Beatty at the time. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say myself, you know, but maybe. You are in there, so you're in there. Uh, Ryan Giggs, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're all sort of, you know, they make the sport look just slightly more artistic than maybe the right hand, you know, uh, gifted players. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would probably say, you know, when, when you look at Wazi Makram again, he's another one. So when you, when you, you know, I look at all of these kind of sports people, it's, it, they do have an advantage, I think. I think uh, they're able to, um, it's angles that you, you know, negate. You know, there's the rough that we have um, when we play in a test match, you're able to exploit them, you know, conditions. Um, so, yeah. I think there is an advantage being left-handed. And talk to me about what it's like. Because obviously, being Sikh, you are um, you're in. It's an England team that you're playing for. Did you experience much racism as you were playing the game? That's been the forefront of the news for quite a bit on, on in cricket in particular. Well, I think for me, maybe I was slightly um, not looking for that, or I had people around me, like I had a life coach who just said, "Look, I just want you get." I just want you to play for England and we've got to focus on taking wickets and performances is what's going to keep you in the team and, and, and you know, get you to the top. Um, so, you know, look, I, I'm not denying that things, what, what's out there and, mm. and people are experiencing does exist. 
Um, but then people ask me the question, you know, how did you get to the top and play for England? And I think maybe one of the reasons um, helped me to have that protective blanket was having a good team around me, a mm. life coach and, um, you know, fitness trainers, you know, and that kind of helped me. And if there's other young sports people out there who want to, you know, play for their country in rugby, cricket, any other sports and represent England, you know, maybe, you know, a mentor or a life coach could mm. help, you know, towards that. Uh, but yeah, look, I think people are having much more bigger discussions about um, diversity, inclusivity, you know, in, in, in sport and, and how, we, how we can sort of help that, especially at leadership levels and, and also representation. Well, so very important as well. And I notice also that you always wear your patka, which is the, what you're wearing on your head, whilst you're playing. And that became a thing, right? A lot of people emulated that. Yeah, I, I was really surprised when I played for England, um, you know, in India. I, I remember Andrew Flintoff said to me, look, I think there's Monty Mania has, is existing in England already overnight. And um, I, I, I didn't really believe him until uh, I played, you know, my first first class game against Derbyshire. And there was people with the patkas and the fake beards and... Uh, and well, I, they went with the beards as well. <laughs> yes, they even made the effort to do that. And, and, and that's the great thing about, you know, the, the fans in this country. They really uh, pick up on, you know, people's different sort of, you know, characteristics or distinguish, you know, features. And, and it's part of just their sort of, you know, support. Well, you, you see, know, that's nice. Cricket. But, you know, as, as that's evolved, people would probably find that offensive and all this because there's a whole woke brigade now that even if you emulate something or they'll call it cultural appropriation or something like that, when actually it was a compliment, right? Yeah, I think that's what it was. And, we've, you know, we've seen it even like with Moen Ali, you know, when, when he plays, people do the same thing. Um, so, look, I, I don't think it's mm. offensive as long as they're celebrating, you know, the, the, the sportsman's talent and, and the mm. achievements. Mm. So since the cricket, because you've, you then you went to teach some Australians as well. So you taught some spin there. How did that come about? And then what have you been doing since you left actually playing yourself? Yeah, I was in Australia and I think Cricket Australia approached me to, um, you know, to work with Steve O'Keefe um, and, and they, were, they had the tour to India. And um, I, I told him a few tricks of the trade, you know, bowl wide of the crease, how to bowl in India with the pictures are slightly don't different. Don't tell them too much. <laughs> no, well, I, I, I did not try to, I, I tried not to say too much. I thought, you know, who, who do OK? But then when he played in the first test match at Pune, he took, I think, um, you know, 15 wickets and won the test match and... Sort of everyone was saying, oh, God, it's, it's the Monty magic, you know, with Very Steve good. O'Keefe, you know, that, that helped him. So um, he was a really good spinner. And part of coaching, which I learned, was actually it's about getting to know the person really well in, in different circumstances. So then when you go and coach them in the nets, it's a lot more easier. You, you, so so is that what you've been doing mostly then since you've sort of stopped playing yourself? Is it mostly coaching? Well, I've, I've, I've also, you know, graduated from St Mary's University and... You know, um, inter MA in international sports, you know, journalism. So I'm trying to build up, you know, my media career now and um, follow the footsteps, you know, like, like yourself, who's oh obviously God. been He's in the industry for over... <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. Get you out. <laughs> You've been in the industry for over 20 years and, you know... It's 30, actually. 30, well, yeah. No. So it's been... What, what follows that, Monty, is you don't look, you don't look that old. E exactly, exactly. That's why I said 20. <laughs> but, uh, but also... Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, but the, I, I think what it is, it's great to, you know, meet people... In the, in, in the media industry and, and speak to them like I have, you know, with yourself, you know, offset and, and telling me the, you know, the, the, the challenges and, and what, what's good to be, a, you know, a broadcast journalist. And I guess that's my next, next goal in life, next chapter now. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I, you know, I did the course. So then hopefully I can start building that career. Maybe you get a show on GB News. Monty, thank you so much.